back to Studio Lou. So today I don't have a super plan for what I'm going to film. I have a loose plan. <laughs> but um, first I wanted to do a little show and tell with you to show you what came today. So some I ordered for curbside pickup from my local sewing shop. Um, well, from a couple local sewing shops, actually. Although I don't know if I have the other stuff here. <laughs> so I saw this fabric. Like, I was thinking about my local sewing shop lately and wondering, like, how they were doing. And, you know, I have this belief that, like, if you want things to be here after, you know, the world reopens again, then try to support them as you can. So I placed a little order for some beautiful fabric I saw. So... Um, I saw this and it's a Josephine wall fabric um, for three wishes fabric. So I got a few pieces from this um, collection. So this one I think I'm actually going to use to make some like really beautiful like butterfly or mermaid kind of like journals or like I don't know there's feathers there's all sorts of things so it just really got me inspired um and then there's another fabric in the same line that just has these amazing sparrows all over it and these colors so like I got enough of this to make either a quilt or a dress <laughs> and I can't decide but I'm sort of leaning toward a quilt because <clears throat> check out this panel so oh, I do have the other stuff here okay so in the same fabric line there's this this is like the large panel that you would use for like a quilt so let me just open it up here a little bit I won't be able to show you the whole thing in one one sitting but so you see there's the beautiful girl and sh she's got like let me just kind of I'll kind of go across the screen with it if I can here so on this side you've got some of those sparrows and you've got swans and you've got some like doves and this brown bird and there's leaves in the bottom like fall leaves and it goes from like warm to cool and then there's her and she has these amazing like feathers in her hair and then at the bottom there's like a little a little fairy there and some flowers and then it goes to butterflies and bees and um at the top it turns into like surf and flying fish and a seagulls up here so yeah like how amazing is that right and I also love that her ear has like little wings so I'm really like yeah this kind of made me hyperventilate a little bit when I picked it up I was like holy cow that's way more beautiful than I even thought it would be so now it's got me thinking about like making a quilt and um I always buy fabric to make myself dresses and then I never like get around to it and then I make my daughter like 20 dresses and <laughs> so it's just more fun to knit for kids or to uh sew for kids than for adults but I gotta get some time to do that so like imagine you know that amazing piece and then this around it quilted around it and I just ordered some um, like quilting uh, quilt top templates. So if you, you know, wanted to quilt, say, like a diamond on the top of your fabric, it has a track in it of a diamond. It's like a plastic piece and you can like sew in the track. And so it will help to guide you um, on your mission to get like even diamonds. So I just ordered some of those and I'm looking forward to using, learning how to use them. So that's that and then I got a couple more things in my fabric order because there was actually like a this stuff was all on sale too which is actually kind of awesome and then I thought I really love this um it's got <clears throat> hummingbirds and then like a little nest but it has little eggs and then thimbles and buttons it's like a sewing kind of theme <clears throat> and I am planning to do like um at least one maybe a few sewing themed journals um I have like some other things that I'm also planning relating to sewing so it all kind of goes together and then I found um this was on sale too this is Tula Pink fabric I believe and um is it or am I 
no, sorry, it's, yeah, it is tulip pink line work. Okay. I couldn't remember for some reason. And I was thinking about making my daughter like um a Beetlejuice themed dress with like, I want to make like these, fa these black felt fabric bats to, to put on it. So that is that project. So that all came from one of my local um, stitching shops here in the greater Toronto area called um, Owl Bee Sewing. And so, yeah, they, they were great, good curbside pickup. And then I ordered this from um, another shop, I think out of um, Arnprior, Ontario, and I totally forget the name of the shop right now, but um, they are Missouri Star quilt, um, like cutting templates. So this is the half hexagon and this is the rhombus. So the reason I felt drawn to get these other than I've been wanting to do some more quilting um, is I saw on Instagram, Yarn Hoarder, her Instagram stories, she used this to make an amazing hexagon quilt out of like Halloween fabrics for her daughter. Oh, it was just amazing. It totally captured me. Like I immediately was like, Google Missouri star half hexagon. <laughs> And I'm a terrible, I'm terribly enabled by people sometimes. But yeah, it was really like nice and I, I'm going to use it a lot. So I also just need to kind of, you know, get on with some projects. Then I'll show you something else that is cool that I got today too. So on my thrift haul adventures where I, I had to, um, my, my son has grown out of some of his like big obnoxious baby toys with all the like the sounds and the colors and the, like some of it, he just doesn't care anymore. So we had this like activity table that had like a, a plastic kind of book on top. But like when he would flip the page, it was always like you had to really watch because once he pinched his fingers. And so now I'm like, we don't need this thing anymore. He's really over it. He's running all over the place now. He doesn't really focus on like an activity, like a baby table thing. So I was like, let's just donate that. So I think I've mentioned before, our recycling center has like curbside kind of items you can look at, you know, while you're dropping things off because they're trying to like generate, you know, revenue, but also they're trying to get rid of things. And when you give a donation, you can take things, that kind of thing. So I found this, I, I was really attracted to this case. I'm like, what a cool little case. And it was taped closed. And so I thought, what a fun thing to just bring home. Like I'll just, you know, I'll grab it and I'll see what's in it when I get home. There's very little surprises in life. Well, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think this is a kit for either those like small Japanese, like, um, sand gardens, like, um, or, or rock gardens or possibly for um bonsai like managing a bonsai plant so the reason i think it's for the sand is because it has this little rake that you would use to rake in the sand this is really high quality it's from japan it's marked stamped in japan with, with japan and these are beautiful wood handles and it's like little gardening kind of tools so there's like this little trowel and then this little like shovel um, and these scissors, which have steel like blades that are extremely sharp. They're also from Japan. Um, so this whole thing is from Japan and they're extremely sharp. And then this is um, just like, I thought it was just a normal knife, but it's actually a serrated blade and it's also very sharp. So let's just do that back up. And the last thing is the most exciting. So first I saw this and I'm like, oh wow, cool. It's like, it's kind of sharp. It's um like a weird resin material. It's not just plastic. It's like resin or something. And I was like, oh, that'd be a great bone folder, you know, because it's got a nice edge on it. So I was picking it up. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then it was like, oh, <laughs> so this is like an extraordinarily dangerous tool. This blade, I can't even begin to tell you how sharp it is. This is like a very high quality kind of knife. So yeah, it, it would shave a hair. It's very, very sharp. So I'm really happy to have found this. I think it's like a really neat kit. So that is my 
sort of thrift haul for today, um, as well as this board beneath uh, everything here, this game board. It's a wooden game board with like Othello on this side. I think it's Othello. And then um, I don't know this game. I'm not sure. But I just wanted another like work surface because as much as I like my um, decoupaged wood board here that I, I painted gray and I decoupaged because I thought it was so boring for these videos that you just look at this wood board but then I realized when I decoupage on top of it it wasn't as flat anymore so that bugged me and so um I think I like this better and I also got a couple of other cutting boards so like if I'm doing something where I'm gluing and this gets gluey or I'm cutting like I can actually just quickly swap it out so all in all it has worked out really quite well <laughs> then the other thing I did today was I started stuffing this and I'm really happy with how it's worked it's working out so now I will be able to grab for things that like I need when I'm working if I just need to like have a little bit um and there's still lots of room in it I haven't filled it yet so I'm really happy to have this little folio um <clears throat> yeah so the other thing is I think so I was going to work on the Tinker Lab challenge for today which is mirror I was going to work on that um I'm also going to jump in on the Ann Brook um textile artist tags so it's a weekly challenge i think it's called 52 tags and on instagram it's like 52 tags henna made or something um maybe i'll post about it in the description box but i think i'm going to jump in on that so this week the tags theme is kiss and so it's like you know xoxo like it's february so um it's it's implementing like that theme into a tag so x's so i was thinking of doing some cross stitching because it's a more textile um themed challenge because she's a textile artist so <clears throat> first we'll get started so i had found these for the mirrors challenge and i was like okay that's perfect and then the funniest thing so i am pulling um uh, papers for signatures for the um the six sidewinder journals that i'm working on i've been pulling papers and you know trying to put them together and i opened this book about how things work and the page that i opened it to was mirrors i'm like that is so cool so <laughs> so i'm actually thinking thinking like I might make two tags or, or journal cards so let's get um two book pages I think yeah two book pages and so probably for one I want to use this as the background like at least one maybe both and I just want to kind of like I want to carefully kind of tear it out without messing with the words over here because I might use those on the uh, on the ephemera itself. I just want to carefully kind of pull this whole thing out. Okay. Then glue stick. And I still have to paint my bird of the day today. I'm probably going to do that after the video though. But maybe at the end of this video I will share um my process of painting um, a morning dove that I am working on. <clears throat> Watercolor like takes me a long time to finish. I keep going like I'll get the basic kind of watercolor done but then I keep going back to it and like feeling like I want to add more color or you know layer more colors and like add more lines or add like oh it's just a never ending. <laughs> I always feel that way with watercolor like object painting so it's okay I'm taking um a watercolor course on Domestica actually um that I'm going to get kind of hopefully get more into in the next little while I have to admit work has just been really crazy and today was a really odd day um I won't get into it, but just know that it was an odd day. <laughs> also, where is my glue book? Over here. There we go. Yeah, so I'm trying to just um, get on with today a little bit 
it was so busy we had to go out and of course pick up my curbside um fabric order and then um we also hallelujah finally got the dishwasher the new dishwasher has landed is installed and is currently washing my dishes so i'm pretty happy about that um it was like very annoying because <laughs> They told me that they had it in stock when I ordered it. Then I got a phone call like when I ordered it on the Monday, I got a call on the Wednesday saying you can pick it up Friday. And I was like, OK, <laughs> several more days of dishes um, and then nothing like happened. I called Friday. They said Monday, Monday passed. And I wasn't trying to be like, you know, a pain in the neck because everybody is like, you know, dealing with enough right now so I didn't want to be a pain in the neck but then you know my I, we're just tired of doing all these dishes with these kids and <laughs> everything we have to do so I called today um, and they're like oh it's here you can come pick it up and I'm like oh my gosh thank goodness so that happened thankfully let me see if I can get this out without destroying this acetate there's one that's not the one I want though. These are like Ikea like stickers I got a million years ago. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, like Ikea blimp. <laughs> I love their names for everything, how weird they are. So I'm thinking like the big one. I'm just going to like put it maybe on half. And then I'm going to fold the other half over and just... It just will go bye bye. Oh, that's so fun. I don't know if you can see like the dimensionalness of these, but like they're really cool. Hopefully, they're not blinding you on the camera though. I apologize if they are. And then another, this one, I'm going to put like just kind of like it almost will feel kind of like a moon, you know, but it will give that mirror, mirror kind of effect. Then the rest of them I will just set aside. So now I'm going to go back to this mirrors page. Um, Periscope. The Periscope makes it possible to see around corners. It has one mirror to capture light rays from an object and sends them to another mirror which directs the rays to the eyes. So I'm not going to bother with this cute elephant here. But I am going to take this, um, this text about Periscopes. that's kind of cool that's why I love making ephemera because you can make like these really like cool little um you know pieces of like art it can be like educational and it can tell stories and that's what I like about this um kind of craft is that you can really put a lot of yourself into it I have some repair work to do tonight somehow I did the craziest thing so my spinning one of my spinning wheels that I was going to spin some yarn on I'm like behind in yarn because I've been not having time to deal with this um there's like rubber feet on the bottom so somehow like the rubber foot has a metal screw that goes through the middle and that's what holds the rubber foot on and then the rubber foot itself has like a little hole that you basically you attach the rubber foot and then you would screw upward through the hole in the rubber to attach it to the wood on the bottom of the wheel well somehow I did the silliest thing like I had it on the carpet in in the in my studio here and I dragged it on the carpet and it must have just been like that the carpet like grabbed a hold of the rubber and didn't let it go or something and it pulled the rubber right over the screw head even though the screw head is like maybe an eighth of an inch like wider than the hole so like I can't just pop it back on I have to actually take the screw out of the hardwood and then <laughs> put the, the rubber back on oh it's just gonna be so much fun driving mirror um headlight mirror so yeah that's my other objective of the evening I had written to my husband when I was I was down here working the other day and I said I have two things that I need your help with and so he's like okay <laughs> and I, I told him you know my my paper cabinet which is actually like a vintage dresser <clears throat> it has 
one of the um the top drawer got stuck and i thought there must be something jammed in behind it or something that's causing it to, to get stuck so i resolved that and then i told him also about this spinning wheel uh issue <laughs> And so he didn't sound particularly enthused to deal with either of them, but he does. He does these things for me. He's very reliable in that way that he will take on um, the worst of jobs for me. Like he's very kind that way. Um, he is like the diaper changer, the dog poop scooper, like <laughs> the rabbit cage cleaner. Yeah, he does a lot of these things for me that, like, I don't want to do or I don't feel like you. I mean, I do them too, but just not as frequently. I have to give it to him that he does a lot more of the, like, stuff that just isn't fun to do. <laughs> and I think I owe him a lot because he's awesome. But we have a bit of a partnership because, you know, we do, we both do different things and, uh, we make it all work and we make sure that neither person is feeling like they're getting, you know, the short end of a stick. <laughs> and that's what, that's what marriage is, is just trying to, you know, decide what things you're good to do and not do and working out an agreement um, that works for your family. So <laughs> we're pretty reasonable in that way. So... But yeah, so he was like, okay, like I'll, you know, get working on this. But then it just annoyed me that I couldn't get into my paper cabinet. So I'm like, I'm going to fix this. And I did. I fixed it. I took the whole thing apart. It wasn't even that it was jammed. It, I think I mentioned this in one of my last videos. Like it wasn't even jammed, which I was proud of. I'm like, it's not because I have too much stuff. Um, it's that the little board on the bottom of the cabinet had come loose and had like fallen down on one side, not letting the cabinet be pulled up. So... I feel better about it. So, okay. So Periscope, I think I'm going to put here. And then we've got this cool, like, diagram. And I'm going to put that one here. And Driving Mirror. Driving Mirror, da-da-da-da-da. It's a convex mirror. Okay. So I might put that one at the top. And then this one down here. And there's also this, um, mirrors. I'm not going to bother with that. It's kind of like too literal, you know? So, yeah. So I'm excited to get started on these Sidewinder journals, but I'm also really enjoying these daily challenges. They're making me feel like good about like... I don't know it just makes you feel like you accomplished something like you're doing something and getting it done and you're able to kind of like track what you're doing and and then I went um had to ship packages from my Etsy shop and that got done and I also had to, I did a curbside pickup I purchased from this lovely, lovely um, guy on Facebook Marketplace some wood rounds for a perpetual moon calendar that I'm making for my daughter and some other kind of cool projects that I have in mind. And um, so I picked those up and that was a nice, um, it was a nice little drive to another city to pick something up. So it felt good to get out in the sunshine a little bit. Um, okay, and now maybe, what else does this need? I mean, nothing really. I quite like it how it is. I think as simple as it is, I quite like it. Let's see if there's an element of fabric maybe. I don't know. I have all these like scraps of fabric that I'm like trying to decide if I could use I don't think a leaf with this blue fabric might be kind of cool on there hmm I don't know it doesn't really go with the mirror theme not that I'm a huge like stickler for themes but I'm gonna just go with this and then I'm gonna um, back them and I'm going to round the edges and stitch around them yeah so 
let's grab some cardstock. Packaging cardstock. It's also nice to be building up my ephemera box. I'm feeling really good about that because like everything will have all these different themes so you know I can pick from it for like when I have a relevant theme or I can use it for like a commonplace all sorts kind of journal you know without any really tight theme which I really enjoy making because like it's kind of nice to just be able to like have like randomness like I like themes like um Maybe like just art, you know, like fine art, surrealism, um, you know, science, just all different things. I have lots of thoughts about like all these journals that I want to make. I also want to work on my, my 80s toys like kind of journals that I've been planning. But I feel so good now that I got a lot of my ephemera organized into like thematic kind of bags. So that is like really a good thing. So now I just have to cut around these and stitch around them and keep the corners. Okay, so those are clipped. Now, let's just stitch around these real quick. So, if the sound of a sewing machine bothers you, I recommend that you hit the mute button for a second there. Because we're going to be stitching right about now.
Mm -hmm. This one. Then I'm trying to decide what color do I want to ink around these with. Hmm. I need to empty my garbage. Goodness me. I'm going to just do that really quick. Here we go. This little recycle basket that feeds the big recycle bin. <laughs> and I think, I don't know, what day is it today? Tuesday. Yeah. Garbage day is not till Thursday. So I guess I have some time before I have to haul my recycle bin upstairs. So I think I'll just do like a maroon brown. I like these because like they almost feel kind of like retro and modern like they have the old like illustration and the old book page <laughs> and then um, the, the mirrors that are just like kind of like bright and modern. All right. I'm just going to move my inks over here. I have this precarious little glass of water over here that I'm using to watercolor with and I totally should not have it on my desk when I'm not using it because things like that always end in tears. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, I'm going to call those finished. Now I think I will um, get things ready for the Anne Brooke tag that I want to make. So we have two book pages. I use that as my, um, my base for the tag. Now I know she's doing like little, little tags, but she's keeping on a key ring and they're so cute, but I want to do a large tag, um, each day that I can use in a journal. I mean, I might do some little ones. I just feel like a large tag will give me more space to express what I want to express. So I don't know how much of this I'm going to do on camera, but I will show you the result um, after it's finished because I'm going to do some cross stitch on it. And um, yeah, that will, I would take a long time to, uh, it would take me like maybe at least half an hour. I'm going to cross stitch with a nice, probably one of my own hand dyed yarns, like a, in a fingering weight. So I just want to trim the edges off here and then make this into a tag shape. Now I'll probably make it slightly shorter. That's quite a long, yeah, that's probably better. And then um, I'm trying to decide if I should back this now or not, because I might want the rigidity to get my needle through, but I don't want to make it too thick that it would be hard for me to like um, stitch on. So I think because it's February and the theme is Kiss, um, I might want to use like a neutral pink or a red. I have all these little sample fabrics. I'm going to go pink, I think. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, getting cardstock or something. So I think I won't use thick cardstock. I'm going to use like manila folder. Cookies and squares, yum. I have all these like folders that I get from thrift stores. I actually got quite a few of them recently from our recycle center because there was like a whole bunch of them, but I'm at capacity. I don't need any more of that kind of thing right now. So, okay. Let's 
see what I want to do here. I don't know if I want to cover the whole thing and like use it as a base maybe. Um, or I might just do like right where the crease is and just rip it. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just going to tack it down just, just with a bit of glue because I'm going to stitch over it. I'm not going to need a ton of glue. I'm also going to stitch around the edge of this, so I'm not too concerned. Um, I'm just going to make like a base for my stitching, like a background base. this fabric that I think would go really nicely with this um, and then I could also stitch on that yeah that would be great actually let's do that so let's just find a logical place to cut this there and do I want both of those flowers or just one of them I think probably I only really have room for one of them Yeah, I think I'll just go with just this one with the leaves. Okay. And then just try to decide what direction I want to do this from. Maybe like that direction. Okay, so now I just got to sort of not fussy cut but kind of fussy cut it out i want some of this obviously this nice blue in the background because i really like the um the shape where are my i have scissors more more well suited to this than um i need to clean out this little basket goodness me there they are I swear I can have like the smallest little containers and then they just end up being like over capacity. Oh, no, no. oh here we are. My daughter's always cutting things with these and so they're always like haunting me. We probably have like 20 pairs of them, like everybody who, you know, may have purchased that scissors collection. I get mine just from the thrift store, but like you always find that, you know, that whole collection usually <laughs> at the thrift store. So, uh, yeah. So I have about a million pairs of scissors, but I've always been like a scissors hoarder. My husband always jokes that we always like, we, he thinks that I hoard, um, measuring cups and spoons because I have multiple sets, but it's like, it's so annoying when you're making something and someone has used like one of your scoops for something that, you know, it's not needed that whatever it is, doesn't need to be measured, but they've used it for that. Like something like, you know, coffee or dog food or, you know, whatever. And my experience is when you have a few, you never run out. Plus I have this, like, I like when you can find really cute themed ones. Like I have little, um, different little cups that are like gnome themed and stuff like that. And also I, um, I have a coveted two third and three quarter cup, like the actual cups, which you don't see a whole lot. Or at least I don't. I'm just cutting a little bit around this flower and leaving a little bit of this navy edge. I 
have a feeling I'm not going to feel like painting my bird today. I'm probably going to maybe do it in the morning. Simply because I think I'm going to go hang out with the kiddos. Maybe like read some books. Because I had a really busy work day today. They're having their bath right now. But I had a very busy work day. So I didn't get to like hang out with them a lot. And then we did we ran errands. and So we haven't done a lot of reading today. And I like to read every day. Okay. There we go. So... Because this is um, a hard cutoff, let me think, how would I want to do this? Like, because that's a hard line cutoff. I mean, I could put a piece of lace or something or just stitch over it. It's not really going to matter now that I think about it. But yeah, so that could be good. But also I could do it this way and cover up more of the book page. And then I get a little more, yeah, I like that actually. And we're going to need something up here. So what I might do with this is just take my fabric tack and tack it down. Where is my fabric tack? Right over here. Right behind my camera holder. There we go. hear my dog barking he wants out although he doesn't want out he the minute he gets outside he's like why did I choose this terrible freedom because it's so cold and my dogs are chihuahuas and they they really dislike the cold they are not winter savvy dogs at all but he's just hanging out in his laundry room uh containment area <laughs> while the kids are having a bath and i'm down in the studio because my dogs like to get up to no good when they're unattended they're very good when people are around but chihuahuas tend to be like i want to say they get like a lot of um like anxiety about you know being abandoned or whatever but it's not that with my dogs actually like my my especially toasty our younger dog he's he's definitely not like that he's totally fine he doesn't have anxiety when we leave the room um but poppy my old methuselah dog is like 17 he is blind so i think he just he he wanders around constantly looking for us and when he can't find us i think he's like where am I? Where are they? What's going on? You know, so we just like to contain him in a little bit of a smaller space when he is on his own. So first of all, he doesn't, you know, get disoriented and walk into anything. He does very well, despite being blind. He really does know the layout of both our home and our backyard. He's actually a pretty impressive guy. Um, but yeah, I just like to kind of limit his exposure to anything when I'm not watching. So he's in purgatory for right now when um, my husband is finished with the kidlets. Okay, just trimming the edge of that flower off. There we go. So I think I will stitch a little bit on the sewing machine around this and then I'm going to get on to the cross stitching, which I won't do on camera, but I promise I will show you um, tomorrow when I am finished with that um, or like whenever I make the next video. Hopefully it's tomorrow. I should be able to film something tomorrow. I um, I should be able to get like 30 minutes in at least. My videos have been going a little longer than 30 minutes because it's hard to like get a lot done. Some people are amazing at that, like me, not so much. Some days maybe. Okay, so let's just um, move my wheel here. Okay. So I'm really 
really just going around the edge. Also go around the edges of the flowers and the leaves. make everything stay put you know but I think my stitching on top of this whoops <laughs> I have to get rid of those zigzag scissors I think my stitching on top of this will really solidify everything so I'm not too concerned then what I'll do when I'm done stitching it um so I'll sew through like you can see my stitches here I'll sew through um with my yarn that I'm going to stitch this with and then I'll back it again so it has a nice clean back for writing on on the back um, oh, I missed a little spot. Well, that's going to drive me cuckoo. Did I run out of thread? Is that the problem? Oh, my bobbin is out of thread. That's what it is. Okay. I'm like, wait a minute. That didn't tack down. So yeah, I will get a new bobbin of thread, but I think that that is a video. So thanks again so much for joining me. I really appreciate um, your support and um, have a wonderful evening. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. All of my information is down below in the description box, including my shop and some other things that I'm doing. Um, so thanks everyone. Have a really great night.